Hey everybody, it's Nate from Explorers.life. In this video, I'm going to teach you some of the considerations of choosing an AGM battery or a lithium battery in regards to cold temperatures. But before we get started, I do need to disclose that this is not a sponsored video. Yes, I do have a working relationship with Battleborn Batteries and I've done sponsored videos with them in the past, but they didn't ask me to do this and I didn't tell them I was going to do it. I'm simply doing this video because you guys have asked me over and over and over again to do it. Besides, everything I'm going to talk about isn't really opinion. Um, I've, done, I've done research and I can cite my sources and I'll leave links to all of this, uh, all the research that I have done down in the description. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Now we've already covered cost considerations when comparing the two types of batteries. So if that's more of your speed, you can check that one out right up here. Now in that video, I had so many people pointing out the fact that lithium batteries shut down or can be damaged when they're below freezing, which is totally true. But let's make sure that we're comparing bourbon to bourbon here. Get an AGM battery up here. Wait a second. So, there. There we go. Now we got one of each. We're gonna get started by talking about lithium batteries. Now lithium batteries don't do well in sub-freezing temperatures. It's just the way it is. Now in the case of Battleborn batteries, their batteries will no longer accept a charge once the temperature drops to 24 degrees Fahrenheit, but they will continue to be able to discharge until the temperature reaches negative four degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in my opinion, a battery that you can't charge uh, isn't really useful, so we're not really gonna talk about anything below that 32 degree mark. Now, it will vary greatly by manufacturer what will happen at those temperatures. If the battery has an integrated BMS, battery management system like the Battleborn batteries do, or an external BMS capable of uh, charge regulation based on temperature, the BMS will simply shut the battery down until it warms back up. No harm, no foul. Now, if you're running a more budget lithium setup that does not have a temperature control BMS, you could permanently damage your batteries. Lithium batteries don't like to be cold, but don't like being cold is kind of a shitty metric. So let's actually talk about some measurable numbers for a minute. A 100 amp hour battery is only a 100 amp hour battery at a standard testing condition of 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. As the temperature starts to drop, so does its capacity. Here's an example. Let's just say that 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius is the minimum happy place for batteries because it's pretty much the lowest temperature in which both AGM and lithium batteries will be fully functional. Or in other words, both battery types will have the ability to both charge and discharge at that temperature. Now let's start a comparison with lithium. Now this chart is not from Battleborn. Um, it's actually from a master's thesis. And if you care for some light reading, I'll leave the, uh, the link in the description. It's actually pretty thrilling. Now this graph shows us the correlation between battery capacity in amp hours versus temperature in degrees Celsius. On this graph, we will be looking at the line with the little triangles on it. That line is the rate of capacity at which the full battery capacity would drain in one hour. Which means this is the capacity that we are really using the battery, AKA 100 amps out of a 100 amp battery in only an hour. Perhaps that's a bit extreme, but I do want to compare the capacity when we're actually putting our batteries to work and not just barely sipping amps out of it. So since we said that freezing is the lowest happy place temperature of lithium, let's check there. So at zero degrees Celsius, it looks like the capacity is a little over 17 amp hours of the 20 amp hour battery that he's using, which is 85% of full capacity. One step further, this would mean that if he was using a 100 amp hour battery, he would still have 85 amp hours at his disposable for use when the battery was right at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Now let's talk about the exact same idea, but with AGM. Now I couldn't find a nice third party uh, graph from a scientific journal like that one. Um, but this graph is, uh, is from Concord Battery Corporation, and at least it looks pretty jit. So um, we're gonna go with it. This graph shows the percent capacity in relation to the degrees in Fahrenheit. So for this graph, in order to compare bourbon to bourbon, we need to be looking at the line with the diamond on it, as it's the same discharge rate we were looking at on the lithium graph. Jumping down to freezing, 32 degrees here, we can see that our battery capacity has dropped to about 43%. Now, we've talked about it pretty extensively in the past, but if you remember, AGM batteries don't like to be discharged below 50% of their max capacity. Doing so greatly shortens their lifespan. So we've got a 100 amp hour battery at 32 degrees, which is now effectively a 43 amp hour battery, and we can really only use 50% of that capacity, which means that essentially our 100 amp hour AGM battery is operating on about 22 amp hours. 
So just a shade over a quarter of the usable capacity of a lithium battery at 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. Moral of the story, keep your batteries warm. Neither AGM nor lithium batteries like to be cold. Do your best to mount your batteries inside the climate controlled portion of your camper. Worst case scenario, you could always add some thermostat controlled heating pads to your batteries. Just be sure you have to figure that into your power audit. Oh, speaking of power audits, if you must mount your batteries outside the climate controlled portion of your camper, you don't want to add heating pads and you plan to be regularly camping in sub-zero temperatures where lithium batteries couldn't charge, lithium is not going to work for your needs. And you should really consider cold weather storage capacity of AGM batteries when performing your power audit because you might need more batteries in that case. But if you can manage to keep your batteries above freezing in some way or another, a lithium battery can have up to four times the capacity of an AGM battery at 32 degrees. Now, last point. I left it for last because it's potentially the most confusing part, yet least relevant of the discussion in my opinion, but it should still be mentioned. What if you're barely using the batteries? Let's say you're draining a 100 amp hour battery at C20, which means that you will drain that 100 amp hour battery in 20 hours. So an average of five amps per hour. So basically like charging two cell phones at the same time. When you draw amps out of an AGM battery at a slower rate, it kind of has more capacity. And you can see that on this graph. This line shows the capacity at those various temperatures when we're draining our battery at that slower 20 hour per 100 amp hour battery rate. So as you can see here at that rate, you'll actually have about 90% capacity at 32 degrees Fahrenheit if you're barely using any power. Now you'd still want to take into consideration only being able to use 50% of your battery capacity since it's AGM, which would result in a total of about 45 amp hours of usable battery capacity at 32 degrees Fahrenheit if you're only draining your batteries for a max of five amps for a 100 amp hour battery. So how does that compare with lithium? As you can see on this chart, lithium isn't as affected by rate of discharge, and we don't even have a comparable rate of discharge on this particular graph. So we're just gonna use the slowest one available uh, which would be on a full battery drain in five hours or an average of 20 amp constant discharge. The line from lithium would fall somewhere in this ballpark or in the 91% capacity range. So even at the slowest discharge rate and best case scenario for AGM, you're still looking at a comparison of over 91 amp hours available capacity for a 100 amp hour lithium battery versus 45 amp hours of available capacity for a 100 amp hour AGM battery. Again, to sum up my own personal thoughts about this entire subject. <laughs> Moral of the story, keep your batteries warm. Neither AGM nor lithium batteries like to be cold. Wow, you ever get deja vu? That was, that was weird. Anyway, that about wraps up this video. But before you leave, I just wanted to give a quick heads up. I've opened up some options for personalized support to help you design electrical systems in your camper van or RV. I've got a private group where I answer questions in much greater detail and in a more timely manner than I could possibly manage on all of my public social media accounts or emails. I'm currently offering the private support group, custom wiring diagrams, as well as one-on-one -on -one consulting calls. Now, if you don't need personalized support or you don't wanna pay for the info, that's totally fine. I still have all kinds of free information about designing solar and electrical setups for RVs and camper vans, and you can browse all of that information in the description below. That's all there is to this video, and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, it'd be awesome if you would share it with somebody who could also benefit from it. If you have any questions about this topic, leave me a question in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this one, and I will see you in the next video. Working? Working? It's for YouTube, for the video.